Music theory is a term that scares a lot of people. It's looked at as this nebulous, impenetrable, confusing realm that musicians should fear. But the reality is, music theory is kind of easy. People like to overcomplicate it, but at its core, this stuff is really not that hard to understand. And today, I'm gonna prove it. What's up guys, my name is Connor and welcome to the Songwriter Sanctuary. If this is your first time here and you like what you find, I encourage you to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. Your support really goes a long way, it's deeply appreciated. Alright, so today we're going to talk about chord progressions. What are they? What do they do? How do we understand them? So the intent of this video is to serve as a sort of primer on how to use chord progressions as a songwriter and how to interpret chord progressions when you're analyzing other songs. This video will also serve as like Chord Theory 101 for a lot of my other videos where I do some deeper dives into chord theory. So in keeping with the theme of making things as simple as possible, we're just going to talk about the key of C today. And the reason why is on a piano, the key of C is all of the white keys. What you just saw is the C major diatonic scale. When I say something is diatonic, what it means is it comes directly out of a specific scale. In this case, the C major scale. So you'll hear me use that word. If something is diatonically in the key of C major, that just means it only uses the white keys, we don't touch the black keys. Another simple thing just for terminology's sake, if I say something like a C scale or a C chord or I just write C on a piece of paper, it's implied that it's major. When you're talking about minor chords, you have to say minor, and if you're writing it, you have to write a little M next to the chord to indicate that it's minor. But with major, it's assumed. You don't have to do that. All right, I think that's all we need to get into the deep end here. So let's just start talking about what the chords within a key are and how we use them. So what we're gonna be talking about today is major major and minor chord triads. A chord triad is a chord that has three notes in it. Major triads tend to sound more bright and happy, like this. And minor chords tend to sound a little more sad or depressing, like this. There are formulas you can use to construct a major or minor chord anywhere on the piano, and I'll show that here, but we're not going to dissect it in much depth because we're only going to be looking at the C major scale today. You don't really need to know the formulas to understand this in the key of C. So major and minor chord triads are by far and away the most common chord types you will find in Western music. If you flip on pop radio and listen to a string of hits in a row, they will probably comprise 90 to 95% of the chords you hear. Don't check the stats on that, it's just a rough estimate. But the point is, most songs you hear, you can play those songs if you understand how major and minor chords function. So within any major key, there are seven diatonic chords and this is how they work. To make a diatonic chord, you start on a note in the scale, in this case we'll start on C. You play that note, you skip the next one, so we'll skip D, you play the one after that, which is E. You'll skip the next one, so we'll skip F, and then you'll play the one after that, which is G. So you have three notes all separated by a note in between within the scale. C, E, G, if I play those all at the same time, that's C major. Now because this starts on the first note within our scale, we're gonna call that the one chord. So in the key of C, your one chord is C major. Starting on D, our two chord, the second note in the scale, it'll be a D minor. Because of reasons. The diatonic two chord in a major key is always minor. We're not gonna break that down right now, just trust me. So your two chord is D minor. The three chord, starting on E, is E minor. The four chord, starting on F, is F major. The five chord, starting on G, is G major. The six chord, starting on A, is A minor. And then the 7 chord is a bit of an oddball. It's B diminished and it sounds like this. Like something out of a horror movie soundtrack. I like to think of diminished chords as being more minor than minor, but we're not going to really get into them here because they're very hard to use. At least compared to major and minor chords. We're just going to focus on chords 1 through 6. So just to recap really quickly, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. So if you pay attention to the previous graphic, you'll notice that I was using Roman numerals to denote the chord number. This is a very common system that you'll see a lot. They look like this. Capital Roman numerals imply major, lowercase Roman numerals imply minor. So take a good look at this and get really familiar with it because these are going to come up very frequently if you start going down this road. So why do we use numbers instead of just calling it C major, D minor, E minor? Isn't it just one extra thing we have to keep track of? Well, 
Yes, but there's a good reason. The reason why is that these numbers of chords will apply no matter what key you're in. For example, if I'm in the key of A flat, my one chord would be an A flat major. Clearly a different chord than C major, but within the key of A flat, it functions in the same way. So if I say I have a one, four, six, five chord progression, that means if I play those chords in order, the emotional weight of that pattern is gonna be the same no matter what key I play it in. Completely different set of chords, but it carries the same emotional weight. So what is that emotional weight? Wait, what do each of these chords actually mean? This is one of those things where it's really hard to pin it down with language, but I'm gonna do the best I can. So the one chord, I like to think of it as the happy home bass chord. Happy because it's a major chord, and home bass because it feels the most resolved of any of the chords. You could just sit on the one chord all day, and you feel like you're just chilling at home, having a good time watching your favorite show on TV. We'll talk about the major chords first, so I'm gonna skip to the four chord. The four chord I like to think about as the start of the adventure chord or maybe the question mark chord. It sounds like you have some movement. You're leaving your house, you're going out into the world where things can happen. And it also sounds like a bit of a question mark. The one feels like a period or an exclamation mark. It's like, ah. It's very resolved. But the four sounds more like, huh? It's like there's something hanging in the air that's unresolved that needs to be answered. Our last of the three major chords is the five chord, and I like to consider this to be the peak of the action chord. This is like the climax of a story. You're fighting the dragon. There's the most tension here of any of the major chords, and the five chord is just absolutely begging to resolve back to the one chord. So we've got one is happy home base, Four is start of the adventure or question mark. We're also gonna call it happy start of the adventure, happy question mark. And then five would be happy peak of the action. Happy for all of them just because they're all major chords. Now, as you might predict, we've got sad versions of each of these chords, hence the three minor chords that we haven't talked about yet. So to get to the relative minor of each of these major chords, which means the chord that functions basically the same way but as a minor chord, what you have to do is you have to find the chord that starts two notes down in the scale. So our one chord, our happy home bass, starts on C. Our one is also our eight, it's the last note in the scale. So if we walk back two notes, we go to seven, we go to six, which means our six chord, A minor, is our relative minor chord, or the sad home bass chord. If we're looking for our minor counterpart to the four, we go back two notes to the two, which is D minor. So your D minor would be like your sad start of the adventure, or question mark chord. Your three minor would technically be the sad peak of the action climax chord. It's a little more complicated than that with this one, but we're not gonna get into that. We're just gonna think about the three minor as functioning in a similar way to the five chord. So that's basically it. Like I said, we're ignoring the seven chord, so that basically gives you the landscape of the six diatonic major chords that we're gonna use and how you can use them. So what you do is you pick a few of these and you string them together and that forms a chord progression. And the sequence of those chords is what carries the emotional weight of the harmony. For example, I said one, four, six, five earlier. Let's listen to how that sounds again. Now the first chord in the progression is the one that's gonna carry the most emotional weight. Because we're starting on the one chord, which is our happy home bass chord, this sounds like a very resolved happy chord progression. Our four chord makes it feel like we're moving somewhere. Our six chord just injects a little bit of a minor twist into our major chord progression. And then our five chord feels like we've reached the peak of the action and we're ready to go home to the one chord. Funnily enough, if you flip-flop the four and the five chord in this progression, you get the most commonly used chord progression in Western music, which I've actually made a video about. It's, I believe, up here. I always forget which side it appears on, but I think it's over here. So if you want to know more about chord progressions and that chord progression more specifically, feel free to check that out. In fact, here's a few examples of songs that use that progression. I'll give you one more example of a song's chord progression just because I think this is funny. The chord progression for the following song is two, five, three, six. And 
And yes, those are the chords that you would use to rickroll people. So if you know which chords are in any key, and you have the chords to a song, you can figure out what the numbers are. That will A, allow you to play the song in any other key, and B, help you to understand what's going on harmonically with the song so that you can take those principles and apply them to your own writing or arranging. So that's pretty much it. If any of that didn't make sense or was confusing, just let me know in the comments down below. I'm happy to clear things up. Otherwise, get songwriting, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.